have an 11 kilowatt solar system. Obviously, it all starts here. You got to produce energy. But in 2023, that's just not enough. And that's because the laws are changing to make it more and more difficult to sell that energy back to the grid for any kind of money. So the real goal should be to produce and store your energy. And unless you don't want power when the sun goes down, that means a battery. For my house, I went with the Franklin Home Power Setup. These are their batteries called A Power batteries, and I have three of them. And the reason why I love these batteries is first of all, just look at them. They are industrial grade, like military grade looking, honestly, very impressive design and layout. It just feels like it's going to last. It has that build quality and they are bigger than something like a Tesla Powerwall too, but there's a reason for that. These have lithium iron phosphate chemistry for the batteries. My favorite chemistry for home storage. They're a little bit bigger, right? As we can see, they're a little bit heavier, take up a little more space but they will last way longer and they're way safer as well. And here on the side, you can see the charge indicator light, which is really cool and striking at night. It tells you exactly how much juice is in the batteries. But this military grade design doesn't just end with the chemistry of the batteries. Take the inverter, for example. Each A power battery can output five kilowatts. So if I had just one of them, I could put out five. But because I have three, I can put out 15 kilowatts of continuous power. That's enough to charge my EV at 10 kilowatts and run my air conditioner at four kilowatts and still have room left over. But what's really impressive is these have a 110 amp LRA rating, which means that it can boot up a four ton air conditioner even when the grid is down. And that's really impressive. That's what some batteries can't do. Again, very high end industrial grade. So for me, I could pretty much power my entire house even if the grid were to go down. And speaking of the grid going down, this battery system has a 16 millisecond response time. So when the grid does go down, it jumps in, disconnects the grid, and powers the batteries in 16 milliseconds. That's so fast, our computers aren't affected, nothing shuts down, it's really industry leading stuff. Another big reason why I chose Franklin is because they work directly with the SPAN smart panel, which I had already installed. That's a nice feature. And this, is the A gate. This is the brains of the operation. The grid runs into here. The batteries run into here. The span smart panel runs into here. That means that all central decision making happens right here. If the grid goes down, it can disconnect the grid, power the batteries up. That way there's no risk of charging the lines and hurting line workers, right? And it can detect the grid. And when the grid comes back, It'll wait, actually. I didn't know this, but it'll wait about 10 or 15 minutes and wait for the grid to stabilize because sometimes that sine wave can be a little sporadic or fluctuating. But as soon as the grid is stable, it'll kick back on and let the batteries charge back up. It does all that right here. And there's one more feature that I hadn't even considered. So what happens when the grid goes down, if you don't have batteries normally with a solar system, is the system says, hey, there's no grid and shuts down and goes into kind of a standby mode, right? Now, because I have batteries, that never happens. The batteries kick in and the solar keeps working. But what if the solar kicked on, I ran the batteries all the way to empty. The next morning, they wouldn't turn back on. Well, with Franklin, they've thought of that too. They have a system called Black Star, which even when the batteries are run down, it will send a signal to the solar inverters and kind of wake them up around seven o'clock on the hour, eight o'clock, 9 a.m. And until they turn on to charge the system back up. So worst case scenario, for example, for us in the winter time, these batteries can't run our house all the way through the night just yet. I would probably need one more or maybe some more solar. But even if that happened, the power would go out for a couple of hours. And then as soon as the sun came up, it would start charging the batteries back up again, all automatically without any intervention from me. That is awesome. So why does all this matter? Well, because unlike fighting your cable monopoly, which you can do for like 50 bucks and a 5G internet plan, the energy monopoly is probably the hardest in your life to kick. In the summertime, I produce enough energy, if we're careful, to charge the batteries all the way up and run my house all through the night. To my utility, it would be like I flipped off the circuit breakers and went on vacation. But in the winter, we can't quite do that. At least, not currently with how many panels that I have. In our best month, which was August, we produced 1,670 kilowatt hours of energy. But here in November and so far in December, we're gonna produce just around 1,000 kilowatt hours. And that's not gonna be quite enough for our needs. Our solar and batteries cost roughly $80,000, but we'll leave links to pricing and all the information that you need because all these things are gonna vary based on where you live.